Hi guys, it's been a while. I know it's been a crazy couple of months. We moved, we are renting this gorgeous 1914 home. I have been spending some time decorating for Halloween while we're unpacking. So it's been a little bit of chaos, but today I wanna to show you how I made this gorgeous, fun, Harry Potter inspired floating jack-o-lantern set out of these 99 cent store pumpkins. They come with this little LED light in here, but it's not great. This is not really the vibe. So I'm gonna show you how I did a couple really easy steps to kind of make over this pumpkin so that we have these like kind of vintage looking jack-o'-lanterns. Let's get started. The first thing that we're gonna do is to kind of take care of this glitter situation. And I figured that the easiest method would be to just kind of cover it up. It is everywhere. If you touch it, if you, especially if you do a lot of these, you're really going to want to get the glitter under control. I thought about removing it with some alcohol or some kind of solvent, but what it's stuck to is styrofoam and I was worried about it eating into the styrofoam. So I decided to just cover it in Mod Podge and it really only took one coat. It was a really messy process while I was doing it, but afterwards you just throw away all of that newspaper. If you make sure that you really cover your area, you'll be totally fine. And then you'll just wash off layers of glitter and Mod Podge. I popped off these pumpkin stems first just to make sure that I could get all of the glitter area. And then we're going to paint those and put them back on in the end. Don't worry if the glitter is getting into your Mod Podge or your paintbrush, it's gonna be fine. It's all going to become one single layer. So that glitter is going to get sealed in and you'll have like a fairly smooth surface to work with. Okay, once everything is dry, you can remove the little LED lights and I will link the ones that I ordered from Amazon. These are just little flickering tea LED lights, but I got these for two reasons. One, I, I really don't like the ones that come in the pumpkin. They're just crazy, like Halloween rape vibe. And two, I needed something with a remote because going through and turning these on one by one is a tedious task, especially if they're hanging from these little command hooks. I figured something with a remote would be a good investment and they were well worth it. So once the Mod Podge is dry, you can go in and start carving your pumpkin. I got this $5 carving set from Target and Although this is a classic kind of modern jack-o'-lantern face, um, I wanted that like 1950s kitschy Halloween look. So I went in and kind of made some of the eyes a little troopy, turned some of them into full ovals and circles. I removed teeth. Um, some of them, I actually took the teeth and glued them up here. That was Chase's idea. I think it worked out really well. I left a couple of them this way. You, you can totally skip this step if you like the carving in this jack-o'-lantern. And honestly, if you do, that's fantastic because that is a really time-consuming and kind of messy step. Because this is styrofoam, I kind of wanted to seal in those areas that I cut. So I took my embossing gun and very lightly, you have to be careful because you can go too deep and then all of the little styrofoam bubbles will show through. But I kind of just melted those areas that I carved so that they were a little bit smoother. Okay, so after the carving is done, you've sealed everything up, then you can go in to spray paint. Through the little hole on the bottom, I spray painted the inside yellow. Now, I did a lot of steps here. You don't have to do every one. I mean, I just kind of give you all this information in hopes that it will inspire something. So if you take one or two things and decide to skip the rest, that's totally fine. Um, I wanted the inside to actually look like the inside of a real live pumpkin. So I went for this light yellow, I think it's called summer squash, which that's kind of perfect. And then I went through and just 
kind of gave a base coat to the entire pumpkin with that summer squash color. Um, I did 19 pumpkins. I was joking with my husband that I never do two pumpkins, I only do 19, which is a metaphor for all of my projects. Last year I did these flying rats from the Dollar Tree and I think I bought like 30 rats because I have no self-control. One can should cover about 19 pumpkins and then I ran out, it was like the perfect amount. And then once that is dry, I mix together a couple of oranges and browns and creams and I was just kind of going for like a realistic pumpkin color, but maybe a little bit muted. Some of them are a little bit terracotta. Some of them are a little more burnt orange. Looking at them now, they all kind of look the same color, but I think there's enough variation where it looks realistic, like the variation that you would find in a live squash. So you can actually go back in and dry brush, maybe like in the crevices, I did it a little bit darker, or if I felt like the pumpkin was too dark, I would take a lighter color and dry brush those um, bumps. I guess we have like kind of valleys and bumps in the pumpkin. So those like, those hills. Like I said, I also painted the stems because they're just kind of like this flat, dark brown color. So I just added a little bit of highlights and low lights to give it a little bit of variation. And then I popped these tea lights back on in, turned them on, and I hung them all with command hooks and fishing wire. I definitely recommend having a partner. Um, Chase kind of stood on the floor and handed me varied pumpkins and helped me with the placement so that I didn't have to keep getting up and down to see where I was placing them. Okay, I had to switch cameras. Like I was saying, I hung everything with command hooks and had Chase help me with the placement and I think they turned out really great. Now that I have a switch or a remote control, I can just switch them all on and then use the remote to turn them on and off. And at night, this looks so spooky and walking around the table because they're just like floating in the middle of the air. It reminds me of being in the Haunted Mansion and that scene where like the candle opera is like floating down the hall. It gives me such nostalgic, spooky vibes and I, I love it. I'm gonna have these for years and years and I definitely don't regret the time spent on them because I think they were well worth it. I'm gonna do a price breakdown and I will put that below so that you can kind of see how much this project costs, but you also don't have to do 19 pumpkins. Thanks for crafting with me. I hope you have a wonderful spooky weekend. We are going to watch movies and enjoy these jack-o'-lanterns. And I will see you very soon for the next DIY.